Hello, physical science students. We're going to do lab 8.4 on sandwich stoichiometry. And we're going to start in the FET simulation. The FET simulation in Colorado, uh, Colorado, FET.colorado.edu is right here on your lab sheet. And we're going to start with the cheese sandwiches. We're going to put in eight pieces of bread and eight pieces of cheese. Now, everyone has probably made a sandwich before. You know, you need, you, you need, two pieces of bread, one piece of cheese to make a sandwich. And the recipe is right on top of the simulation we'll show you here. Um, if you need to, you can click on sandwiches to get to this part of the um, simulation. And we're gonna put in eight pieces of bread and eight pieces of cheese. Now, if you've ever made a sandwich before, you know that you need two pieces of bread, one piece of cheese, and to make a sandwich. So if we have twice as much bread as we have cheese, we're gonna have some leftover cheese here. We're gonna be able to make four sandwiches because eight divided by two is four, for two pieces of bread per sandwich. And then because we're only gonna make four sandwiches, we're gonna have these four pieces of bread left over. Hopefully everybody understands that because everyone has made a sandwich before. So you're going to go through and make some sandwiches. You're eventually going to uh, switch to meat and cheese. Meat and cheese sandwiches are up here in the right hand corner. I'll show you where to fill things in on the lab sheet here. So when we made our eight pieces of bread and eight pieces of cheese, we had four products, four sandwiches. That's our product. We had zero leftover bread because we, ha we had a multiple of two of bread, so we didn't have any leftovers, but we had four leftover cheese. And then the lab's gonna ask you how many pieces of bread and how many cheese pieces of cheese do you need to make exactly three sandwiches with no leftovers? So if you're gonna make three sandwiches, you need twice that much bread. So three sandwiches times two is six pieces of bread. So you need six pieces of bread and for three sandwiches, three cheese sandwiches, you need three pieces of cheese. So that's exactly how many pieces of cheese. Next, you're gonna go into the meat and cheese part. You're gonna put five pieces of bread, five pieces of meat and five pieces of cheese and see what happens and enter it into the table below here. So we'll go into meat and cheese We'll put five, five, five. And if you have experience making sandwiches, you know the recipe, two pieces of bread, plus one piece of meat, plus one piece of cheese, equals a meat and cheese sandwich. Delicious, that is, if you eat meat and cheese. If you're vegan, of course, there are vegan options for sandwich meat and cheese. So if you have five pieces of bread, you know that's two times two with one left over. So you can make two sandwiches. If you're only making two sandwiches, you only use two pieces of meat, two pieces of cheese. So you have three left over here and you can fill that out, out in your chart. You can go on making other types, uh, other sandwich combinations based on this recipe with different amounts of bread, meat, and cheese. When you get to part three of the lab, you're gonna go to water. And I'll show you how to get to the molecule section here. You'll go to the bottom next to the house and click on molecules. We're gonna make water. You'll do that in the upper right hand corner. And then we're gonna put in six molecules of H2 and four molecules of O2. We're following this recipe now. Just like we followed the recipe or the equation for sandwiches, we're gonna follow a recipe or an equation for water here. And I'll show you how to do that. So we go to the bottom, we click on molecules. We're gonna to come to the upper hand, upper corner here and click on water if you're not already on water. And we're going to follow this equation here. Two molecules of H2 plus one molecule of O2 goes to two molecules of water. 
But it's our job here to put in um, the ingredients list we were given here, six, six and four. So let's do six and four and see what happens. If we put in two and one, oops, we get exactly two molecules of water with no leftovers, just like it says here. But on the um, our sheet, it says we need to, we have six and we have four. We have six molecules of H. We have four molecules of O2, and that gives us six molecules of water with one molecule of oxygen left over. We can predict that because we know we need twice as much hydrogen as oxygen. And if we had six and three, we'd have exactly the right ratio because six is twice as many as three. And then we know we would have the same amount of H2O as we did H2. So if we have six and three, we'd have six. But since we don't have three here, we have one extra we have a leftover oxygen over here. Let's go put that in our table. So here on the lab sheet, we're following the recipe for water. We put in six H2, we put in four O2. And here we put in the products. How many H2Os did you get when you used six hydrogens and four oxygens? Did you have any leftover hydrogen? Did you have any leftover oxygen? Look back on your sim to see, you can use this information right here to fill out your table. And then it's up to you to think about how many H2 and O2 molecules do you need to make exactly four water molecules with no leftovers? Well, you can think your way through this. If I want four, and I treat this as an algebraic equation, I know if I want four here, I have to multiply everything by two because two times two is four. So I have to multiply the oxygen on two, two times one is two, and I have to multiply the hydrogen times two, two times two hydrogens is four. So four here, two here gives me four here. You just multiply the entire equation times two, that gives you four waters, and then figure out how much uh, two times two is and how much two times one is. To get the amount of hydrogen and oxygen, you need to make exactly four water molecules. This time we're gonna do ammonia, and um, we're gonna click ammonia in the upper right-hand corner, and we're gonna use five N2s and five H2s. Now let's go find the recipe for ammonia. So we'll click make ammonia here. We know that we need one NH2, one N2 for every three H2 to give us two ammonias. But what we were given in the problem, we can set that up one to three gives us exactly two with no leftovers. That's just following exactly the recipe here although we have to follow what we're given here, which is five and five. So let's see what happens when we do five and five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We get two NH2s, we get four N2s, and we get two hydrogens left over. We can't make any more than two NH3 because we need a ratio of one to three. If we had six H2, we could make twice the recipe, but we only have five here. So we can only make two NH3 because we don't quite have enough H2 to make kind of a double batch to multiply everything by two here. Um, if we multiplied everything by two, we need six here, 
and we only have five. So we're going to have a lot of leftovers over here. So now you can fill out the um, ammonia. If you want to make exactly two ammonia molecules with no leftovers, that's already set up to make exactly two. How many N2 do you need? How many H2 do you need to make exactly two ammonia molecules? And H3 is ammonia. All right, we're going to combust methane. That's the reaction, uh, the last reaction here. Now, if we follow the reaction as written, it's one methane to two oxygens makes one CO2 and two H2Os exactly. But we're going to start out with six CH4 and six O six O2. We're going to have six of these, but we don't have twice as much oxygen. We have the same. We have six oxygen. We have the same amount of oxygen. So we're not going to have enough oxygen to burn all of this um, into CO2 and H2O. Now what would really happen, we're going to have leftovers here. We're going to have leftover uh, CH4 and leftover H2O here. And you can record this in your table. But what really happens in your furnace, if you're trying to combust methane, which is natural gas, which is what is in your furnace or your boiler, if you live here in the Midwest, and you're trying to heat your house, and your furnace or boiler doesn't have enough oxygen, um, you will produce carbon monoxide because there isn't enough oxygen to produce carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide is deadly. Um, if you breathe it in, breathe in too much, um, it takes up all the room in your blood for oxygen. Um, it bonds to your red blood cells much more strongly than oxygen and rides around in your blood and doesn't leave any room in your blood for oxygen to hook on to your red blood cells and then be delivered to your cells. And so you can die. I actually know a family um, that lost three people to carbon monoxide poisoning um, due to a malfunctioning heater in their cabin. Um, they just didn't wake up in the morning. So if someone in your house starts vomiting, has flu-like symptoms, your carbon monoxide detector goes off, get them out to fresh air. Um, I myself ended up in the emergency room and um, so make sure all, anything that's burning uh, methane here, natural gas, has enough oxygen. Make sure your furnace is vented properly um, so that that carbon monoxide doesn't build up in your house if it isn't getting enough oxygen and prevent deaths. So just a little word of caution. How many CH4 and O2 molecules are needed to make exactly one carbon dioxide and two H2Os? Well, here the recipe is written to make one carbon dioxide and two H2Os. So you can just look at this recipe, this uh, chemical equation, and you know you need one CH4 and two O2 to make one CO2 and one H2O. That's carbon dioxide and water. So now it's your opportunity to go to the game. The game you access by going to the bottom here and clicking game. Choose your level. You're required to play level one and level two. There's six points each. Level one, I'll show you how to get started here. Level one, you can just count your molecules. Um, we know we need two carbons and two H2Os to make one CH4 and one CO2. In this situation, we've made two CH4s and two, um, two CO2s, which is twice 
what it says in the, the equation or the recipe here. So we know that we need at least twice as much, um, is twice as many reactants as it says here in the equation. So I know I need at least four because CH4 was twice as much as it says in the equation. I know I need twice as much stuff over here. We also have twice as much um, carbon dioxide, so I need I, I need I know I need to multiply these numbers by two. Except I also have some leftovers. I know I have two extra C2, two extra carbons, so I can add a couple extra carbons here, and I have one extra H2O that didn't get reacted. So I add that on. And now, just to make sure, I can count all of my reactants and products. I can count atoms to make sure I have everything correct. Let's start with oxygen. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's start count carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, okay. There's six over here, so there has to be six over here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I have six carbons, six gray circles over here, and six gray circles over here. Now let's count hydrogens. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and there's this tricky one under the check, nine, ten. Let's count over here. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I have ten hydrogens over here, and I have ten hydrogens over here, so I'm balanced. Let's check just to make sure. Awesome. All right, you get to do the next four on your own. I'm going to hit start over, and I'll get you started on how to play level two. This one's pretty simple. It's one carbon plus two sulfurs equals one, uh, I think this is carbon sulfide. So I have one carbon, I have one sulfide. I don't have two sulfides, so I don't have enough to even make one of this. So I know I have zero of this. And I really just have one carbon and one sulfide. I didn't even need to count because there were just two molecules on each side. We'll do a harder one together. This one's a little bit uh, daunting for some people. So it's important to look at um, look at your equation here and then look at what you have. Do we have w at least one P4? Yes. Do we have six F2? Yes. We have too much P, uh, too much phosphorus, but we have just enough fluorine. So we know we can follow the recipe because we have just enough fluorine and we can get, we know that we can get at least this many products. One, two, three, four. And we know we have one extra P4. We have one more than the recipe calls for. We have exactly the same amount of fluorine as the recipe calls for, but we have an extra P4, so we can put that in leftovers. So this time, now that we've looked at the equation, let's count atoms just to make sure. Let's count fluorine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve fluorine atoms. Let's count over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 fluorines. We're good on fluorine. All right, let's count phosphorus atoms. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, that's four plus four is eight. Let's count over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have to count underneath the check sign here. It makes it a little tricky. So there's eight phosphorus here, there's eight phosphorus here, we're balanced. You can go back and forth and just count atoms until you have everything balanced, but it's easier to use the equation. 
So now you can finish level two. If you want some extra credit, you can do level three. It's pretty tough, but you can make your way through it. I'll show you the first problem. So this one looks really complicated, but let's wade our way through it. So in order to just make one recipe, one, one, one time through the equation, we need at least four ammonia and seven oxygen. Do we have at least four ammonia and seven oxygen? Yeah, we do. In fact, we have extra. We have one, we have five of these, we only need four, so I know I'm gonna have one extra over here. Um, we need seven oxygen and we have eight, so I know I have one extra, because eight is one more than seven. So I know I'm gonna have one left over here. And then if I use four ammonia and seven oxygen, I'm gonna get four NO2, four nitrous oxide, and six waters. All right, now, am I balanced? Well, I have to count molecules in order to do that. Let's count oxygen molecules. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. Wait, I think I miscounted there. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So we've got 16 oxygens over here. Let's count over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and there's one under the check sign here, 16. So we're good on oxygen. I'll let you count out the nitrogen molecules and I'll let you count out the H molecules to see if it's balanced and check it that way. Thanks for watching. This is Dr. B signing off on uh, Sandwich Stoichiometry.